Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through an example of a type 1 problem, okay? And this is on page uh, 24 of your notes. And this is what the problem states. It says water flows through a 150 millimeter diameter pipe for which the relative roughness, epsilon upon d, is 0 0.0002, okay? At a rate of 0.1 meters cubed per second. <coughs> Calculate the pressure drop over a 100 meters length of pipe, okay? Now, the key words in this thing is calculate the pressure drop. So we know from that, that statement, that it's a type 1 problem, okay? Pressure drop. If it said calculate the diameter, we know it's a type 3. If it said calculate the flow rate, it would say it's, we know it's a type 2, okay? Type 1 problem, and we've been given a value for relative roughness, epsilon upon d, okay? We've also got the diameter, and we've got a flow rate, okay? So we can go ahead and solve this. And we'll do that on the visualizer. Visualizer. So on page 24 of your notes, here's the problem. I shall uh, zoom in a bit. Okay, so we know our equation for a type 1 problem. Delta P Okay, there's our equation for a type 1 problem. If you want to talk through it, you can come down here and do it for everybody. Okay. So we've got a type 1 problem, okay? There's our standard equation. We know the diameter. There's the diameter here, 0 0.15 metres, okay? We've got the relative roughness, epsilon upon d is 0 0.0002, okay? We've been given V dot, that's 0 0.1 metres cubed per second, okay? And we know the length, L, is 100 metres. Now, because we've got v dot, we know v dot equals a times c, okay? And so that obviously is pi d squared upon 4 times by c, okay? So we can rearrange that equation, and we can say v dot, sorry, c equals 4 times v dot over pi d squared. So that's our equation for c based on v dot. This is what we'll use you'll come across this quite frequently as well because you'll often be given the flow rate and you need to work out the velocity, which you can determine if you know what your diameter is. And so our Reynolds number, we know that's rho CD upon mu, okay? Or well, if we replace C in this equation with the here, okay? We have... Uh, rho times by 4 times v dot times by d divided by mu pi d squared, okay? Obviously, this d cancels with that. And so we enter some numbers. We can work out what the Reynolds number is. We've got 4 times by well, rho for water, we know is 1,000. v dot, we've been given, that's 0 0.01. No, it's, you know, it's not, it's 0 0.1. 0 0.1. Okay, and that's divided by, okay, our mu value, which is 0 0.001, times by pi, times by the diameter, which we know is 0 0.15, 0 0.15. So that will now enable us to calculate the Reynolds number, and I work that out to be about 849,000. Okay, so... That's obviously going to be 8.5 times 10 to the 5. <coughs> now, our relative roughness, we know, has been given to us as 0 0.0002. 
So using this value and this value, we can go to our Moody chart, which is on page, if I move that up, you'll see that. On page 23, we've got a large version of the Moody chart for you to use. Like I said, if you want to print it out big, you can do so. So, okay, so there's the Moody chart. We know we're at 8.5 times 10 to the 5 for a Reynolds number. Okay, so here's 10 to the 5. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we're somewhere between these two lines, okay? 8.5 times 10 to the 5 is somewhere around there, okay? And we've got a relative roughness of 0 0.0002. So we're along this line here. 2 times 10 to the minus 4, okay? There's three zeros and a 2 after the decimal point. And so what you do is you read along this line until you hit your Reynolds number, okay? So we come along here to about that point there. And I reckon the Reynolds number is pretty close to 0 0.015. Am I correct? Yes, that's what they... So, Okay, so 8.5 times 10 to the 5, which, is, as we said, is between these two lines, okay? And we had a relative roughness of 2 times 10 to the minus 4. And so you read along this line until you get to that Reynolds number. And then you, once you're at that point, you read across to this axis and you get your friction factor, okay? So my friction factor for this, we determine from both of those values, okay, that this... The friction factor is 0 0.015. So now we know everything for our equation, okay? There's our equation. We've got F, our friction factor. We've got the length of the pipe, that was 100 metres. This is the equation I'm talking about. We've got the diameter, which is 0.15. We know what rho is, it's water, so that's a thousand. And C we've worked out from this equation here. And so we can then plug the numbers into our equation. We've got delta P equals F L upon D times by one half rho C squared, which is 0 0.015 times by the length, which is 100, Divided by the diameter, uh, 0 0.15, okay, times by one half, times by 1,000, times by all of this lot squared, 4 times V dot, which is 0 0.1 squared, no, that's 4 squared, yep, over pi squared times by D to the power of 4, so that's 0 0.15 to the power of 4. And that comes out, according to my calculations, 160,112 newtons per metre squared, okay, which we can say is approximately 1.6 bar. So the pressure drop in that pipe and under those conditions is 1.6 bar, and that's all due to the shear stresses in the pipe. Okay? What you had at the start... At the end, you, you've got the same, but you've lost 1.6 bar in pressure. <coughs> so with that pressure drop, okay, can anybody think of how you could deal with a pressure drop? You can imagine the pipelines in in Russia pumping all the oil, or uh, in the Arab states pumping all this oil, okay, through pipes, you can imagine the pressure drops can be huge, okay, the pipes are really, really long, okay, you've got turbulent flow going on, they may be made out of concrete or something, you've got a large pressure drop, how can we deal with this pressure drop, how can we try and, what can we use to, to deal with this? A pump, yeah, a pump, essentially that's what pumps are for, it's to overcome Obviously, if you've got a, if you if you're right if you're trying to raise 
you know, if your pipe is heading upwards, you can, you can use a pump to increase the pressure that way, but also pumps are often used just to deal with this pressure drop, okay? And so if your pump supplies, say you had a horizontal pipe, okay, and you had a 1.6 bar pressure drop, okay, then obviously you needed a pump that could supply that pressure to make sure the flow keeps on going. 